Paladin here. How you guys doing? And uh, we're doing the whole WWE sh talk show thing again. Uh, also known as WWE Talk. I should just keep the show out of it. But anyways, uh, it, it's not even in the title. I don't know why I put it in the thumbnail, but I think the thumbnail would be weird if there weren't two words on the side of the W, so whatever. Off topic. <laughs> anyways, Zach is here with me once again. What's going on? Yeah. And uh, so... We uh, have, again, a good couple of things to talk about, and the uh, first thing, might as well start it off, is uh, the WrestleMania pre-show is apparently going to be two hours long. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Double. Double damn. Yeah, double damn. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, uh, I don't... Uh, how do you feel about it being two hours long? Um... Seems like a little much. Maybe just have like an hour or something. I don't know. Um, unless they're gonna put something really uh, entertaining, good on it or yeah, something. entertaining on it or something. But then, I would just save it for the WrestleMania because it is WrestleMania. If they're gonna put something good, you know, just yeah. save it for the show in general. I so. St <laughs> All right. So let me read the article first before I start ranting a little bit because this is a little retarded. Um. All right. So the article says, in a new report from PW Insider. Uh, the purpose of the WrestleMania uh, 30 pre-show being two hours has been revealed. According to the report, WWE is running the pre-show super long as a... You should see, man, you, there's quotations on super long, by the way. Uh, <laughs> as a strategic maneuver that they will uh, hope to encourage more people to subscribe for the WWE Network. As we previously reported, the beginning of the WrestleMania 30 pre-show will air from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on WWE.com, YouTube, uh, YouTube, Yahoo, etc. as normal. However, the second portion of the program will air exclusively on the WWE Network from 6 to 7 p.m. The company's hope is that the viewers will watch the first hour and become intrigued with being offered during the second, with what they're being offered with the second hour. Then they will sign up for the WWE Network, which locks each subscriber into a six-month commitment in order to watch the rest of the program in WrestleMania itself. Dick move. <laughs> Anyways, uh, essentially, I'm a little mad here because I think, and Zach pointed this out too. We uh, we read the article beforehand, anyways, and uh, I don't think that the pre-show should be like like that. I think that if you're gonna try and get people to like the network, then like. Show something before 5 o'clock and then show that whatever is going to be doing, you know, like say for example a match or whatever is going to be on from 5 to 6 or something like that. And then, uh, like, you know, the commentators talking in junk. Like, put that on the network, but then, like, have another match, you know, the, the 6 to 7 one, have that be, like, the YouTube thing. Don't be let that be the network thing because it's kind of awkward. Like, say, for example, the people that don't have the network... They're watching it on YouTube and shit, and then you move it to the network, and then doesn't really. And flow. then it doesn't really flow. You get paused. People are waiting for another two hours, and then it moves on to WrestleMania. That doesn't make that much sense. I mean, if you have that network, it's okay, you know. But if you don't have, you're just doing the regular style, old-fashioned pay-per-view style. It's like you have an hour break to do something. You know, I don't know. It's just I a don't, little it's, weird. It's a little weird. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, I said two hours. It's like an hour and 30 minutes, technically speaking, because oh. it's like 7.30 to... It said 6 to 7, right? So that, that'd be 7.30 and then... I don't know. It, it's like roughly two hours. Um, but anyways, I think that's a little ridiculous, to be completely honest, because, like, say, for example, they're really interested in it, too, but they don't know about the six-month commitment thing either, though. Like, Do they're stuck in... Yeah, they're stuck in for six, you know, months, and that's just like... Wow, WWE, thanks. I just wanted to see the rest of the pre-show. I mean, um, I mean, little Jimmy asked his parents, you know, to get the WWE Network <laughs> so they can get the pre-show, and they'll be like, they punish little Jimmy because they've left him for six months. I love how he's you grounded. did that reference. <laughs> it's conspiracy. It's conspiracy. It's, 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 it's conspiracy, yeah. <laughs> it's just conspiracy. Spiders. Spiders. What was that from? He said that. I trade Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Girl. Over to SmackDown for a box of spiders. <laughs> what? He said that. <laughs> or something along those lines. And that's uh, the truth. Man. That's, I just, I don't think that's, I don't like that idea at all. I think that's a little awkward. It, again, it doesn't flow right. And then it's kind of a dick move by WWE because, I mean, you've got 
again, it's it's so weird. It's like you know you've got your you no know, your regular watchers, and then you know it moves on to the network. And I just wish it was flipped around. Is essentially what I'm saying. Like it should be the network first, and then the YouTube stuff, and then you know transition on to WrestleMania. Like it's because that's what we've been used to personally. Uh, like. We, we would watch the pre-show uh, sometimes whenever we made it early at my house or whatever. And, uh, you know, when we're watching it at my house, for example. And we would just be happy with the transition of the pre-show just going on to WrestleMania whenever we watched it. And that's that's not what happens now because they're doing this and that's a little ridiculous. And I, I'm just going to hope that this is only for WrestleMania and not the other pay-per-views. Because if it's the same for all the other pay-per-views, that's a little retarded because that's two hours. And also, I, I don't think they'll do it for all the other ones. I, they'll probably just go back to half an hour. I hope they, they do because that's a little ridiculous. But anyways. It's a lot of time to fill. I, I don't... What the hell are you going to do? That's, that's, like a, that's, that's like a almost, six hour That's almost... Show. No, that's... Yeah, that's almost a six hour show. And not only that... It's like one fourth of a day. It's almost like two pay per views essentially uh, put together, <laughs> and yeah. yeah, it's if you think about it, that's 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 five hours. Because <laughs> WrestleMania is a special case because it's four hours, you know, not like the regular three hours. So wait, WrestleMania is four hours? Yeah. Has it always been like that? For a long time, yeah, I think. I don't. Seven to eleven. I don't recognize that. Okay, so I guess that transition. Okay, that is an hour then. Cause it says from six to seven, okay. Yeah, that is a tra- that is a, a, a it's still well, a weird. From five tra- to six, though. Huh? There's still two hours, right? Yeah, it's no, still two hours. Six, yeah, six it's five. Seven. It's five to six to six to seven. So that's two hours. So that is six hours. Yeah. It's six hours of like, Jesus Christ. That's crazy. Yeah, but anyways, uh, next up we're gonna talk about Dolph Ziggler. Uh, recently, Dolph Ziggler has been getting a bit of a push from WWE, which I like. Zach probably likes that too. He just <laughs> get, they can't see you giving the kid the phone a thumbs up. I'm giving a thumbs up. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. I'm a little um Batista, I'm, Batista thing. Just I'm not a, the down thing. I'm a little sad though, um, because he's in the I we'll talk about this more later. Uh he's in the Andre the Giant match, uh, you know, for the trophy and everything. Um, I wish that it was gonna be the the uh, I'd rather have him fight Alberto Del Rio, you know, on the card than uh you know, just being in the Andre the Giant thing. Because at least he'd probably win that. But you already knew that. Wink. Um, yeah, maybe... I would wish he was something more if significant. He's gonna, if he's going to be in the Andre the Giant thing, you know, then I'd hope he'd win then. Because he has so much momentum going in and stuff. How many people did they announce for so far? I think it's... Thir- well, announced so far, I think it's 11, 12 maybe. I think it is supposed to be 30 people, Yeah, it's though. supposed to be like a Royal Rumble. Even though the Royal Rumble was like two months ago. So it's another Royal Rumble. Yeah. Too many Royal Rumbles. I think Batista doesn't win this one again. I, I think it should be... He's not going to be in it. <laughs> I he think finds I, his way in it. <laughs> I think it should be 25 men to be ex- to be exact, though, maybe. Because, you know, Royal Rumble is, you know, special. It's 30 men or 40 men, you know, that one time it was 40. Uh, but uh, I, I think that's... I don't know. I, I kind of wish it was maybe 20, 25. I think 30 is kind of bleh because, you know, it's at WrestleMania and you already had the Royal Rumble. and There'll be, there'll be a bunch of jobbers in there if it's going to be 30. Yeah, it's going to be a bunch of jobbers. I mean, 3MB is already in there. and <laughs> Oh, 3MB. That video on SmackDown. Oh, yeah. there was. you got to check it out. Uh, there's this video on SmackDown that happened recently. Uh, today is the... What's today? 22nd? 22nd? I think. Let's let's check Zach's phone. It is the twenty third. Twenty third. Twenty third. So the the SmackDown of uh, it just uh, turned the twenty third. Five yeah, minutes ago. Well, yeah, it just turned the twenty third five minutes ago. Okay. Five minutes ago, I was right. <laughs> the SmackDown of uh, of of the twenty first. Technically, it was taped on Tuesday. So if you want to get even more, shut technical, up. Just saying. Shut up. <laughs> Fake cheers on SmackDown. All right, so today is technically Sunday. Then I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, three days ago. So that would be the twenty first. Twenty first. Yeah. Okay. The SmackDown of twenty first, uh, March twenty first, twenty fourteen. Uh, you should go ahead and check that out because it's uh, it's it's pretty funny. Like three MB. It's like the name of the video is three MB is uh, preparing for WrestleMania 30 or something like that. And then they just, 
after the everything that goes by, they do this weird promo thing with them in the back, and then they're doing this weird music that's play. It's funny. Anyways. Push Drew McIntyre. Hashtag. Yeah, push Drew McIntyre. We'll start it. Please. Start a trend. Please, push Drew McIntyre, please. And Dolph Ziggler. And, and Dolph Ziggler, yes. But yeah. Um, it's like they don't have anything to do with him, so they'll just put him in that match. They'll, that's like, the, we don't know what to do with like a bunch of these guys, and we'll put them in here. And, you know. Kind of scenario. Yeah. Sort of like a job or big world rumble thing. I always forget to make my phone not be, uh, you're going to hear some sound in a second here, and that's me unlocking my phone because I keep forgetting to do that. Um, screen timeout. Yeah, the screen timeout thing. You're going to hear some vibrations really quick, guys. Uh, sorry, I'm just turning off the... That's not the phone. Shut up. It is the phone because <laughs> I'm recording with the phone. Uh, you're going to hear some vibrations from time to time because that's me turning off the uh, screen timeout, which I am trying to find. There it is. All right, there we go. Because I just like to check the recording time, uh, which we are going to reopen. The, the, there we go. All right. So anyways, back to Dolph Ziggler, though. I hope that since they're pushing him like this, I think that he'll win, maybe. Be, but they also showed off the... They, they, on SmackDown, they showed off The Miz and Sheamus and Sheamus uh, gonna be in it? yeah Sheamus is gonna be in it so are they gonna have Christian versus Sheamus then that's a good question actually cause apparently Christian is supposed to fight Sheamus at Wrestlemania or at least it seems like it's so far because they've been feuding are they gonna do double over? duty yeah double duty then just like Daniel Bryan maybe or maybe Christian's in it too and they're not gonna have a match they'll just have like a mini Segment or Segment in the match, maybe? A little stare down or something. Yeah. I don't know. That's actually... That nobody will care about. That's actually a good question. Are, are they going to do double duty or... Uh, I didn't know Sheamus was announced. Hmm. He was announced on SmackDown. SmackDown. SmackDown, yeah. That's my little thing for SmackDown, by the way. SmackDown, yeah. But anyways... <laughs> Who else is announced? Uh, Big Show is going to be in it, which kind of makes sense, because, you know, Andre the Giant and Big Guy. Uh, Actually... Winkies are back. I, I honestly think that, um, you're not, I, I wouldn't say that joke because I don't think everybody's seen that meme, but anyways, it's so funny. um, there's this meme of Big Show making You want to cry, Big Show? You want to cry? <laughs> <laughs> there's this, uh, there's this meme with Big Show and it's like him's like really pissed off, but it zooms in on his face and it says Twinkies are back and then it zooms in more and then it says nobody told me. What a cry show? He want to cry. And Zach's talking it's about the so one time when Stephanie was slapping Big Show in the face. Anyways, um, Big Show did not give a single fuck. <laughs> He's one of the Twinkies. Yeah, but anyways, um, I think that I don't know. That's a good. That is a really good question, though. One time will tell. Yeah, because um, if they're gonna still have the Sheamus and Christian match, that means that they're gonna do double duty, in which they're gonna do two matches at Mania with Sheamus in it. Or at least Sheamus and Christian in it. If Christian is in the uh, Royal Rumble, which I'm not sure if he is, um, I think the Usos actually are in it too. Then, really? I think they are in it. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. There are some tag teams that are in it too. Um, it's either going to be, to be completely honest though, because they made they they made Big Show really strong like in the SmackDown promo thing. Um, cause yeah, like they had like this mini battle royale with all the uh, people that were announced so far. And, like, Big Show got out Sheamus, and Sheamus and Big Show were the last two, but technically Miz was part of it, too. But then, you know, uh, Big Show got out the Miz, too. Because I, I think Big Show might win it, because, um, he, you know, he's he's pretty much Andre. He's a new Andre the Giant, pretty much. I hope not. I hope he doesn't win. I'd rather see one of the younger stars win. But I just... It, it could elevate him, like... I'd rather, I'd rather just get Big Show out of the way, though. What do you mean? Be, it's... It's kind of obvious. We made him first. No, no, no. I'm saying like, it's kind of it's kind of obvious he's gonna win one of them because it's the Andre the Giant statue thingy. I don't know if it's that obvious. He's the new Andre the Giant though, pretty much. That's why they got Big Show in the first place. I don't know. But anyways, it's either gonna be Big Show, Ziggler, or Sheamus, one of the people that they were showing off, uh, pretty much. Um, I Ziggler. I don't know if it'll be Sheamus either. You didn't watch SmackDown. There was a big promo on it, and they I made know. it seem like Sheamus and Big Show. And still, even if I saw that, I think I. Uh... I think one of the f he's gonna be in one of the final like five people in the ring. Yeah, maybe. I think it'll be one of the youngest. Another stars. good, another good question. If they're smart. 
Another good question is... What's the name? Most of the time. Get Shut up. Right <laughs> I, I wonder, um... Is, is it gonna be on the pre-show, or is it actually gonna be on the card? That's what they're talking about. It should be on the card. It should be on the card. They'll probably open with it, I think, if they were to put it on the card. It'd be smart to put it on the card. Um, I don't see why they put it on the pre-show. I don't know. What is the pre-show? Just them talking around the round table. No. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but yeah, Dolph Ziggler's been getting a push recently. And uh, I hope that, you know, Ziggler does eventually, like, uh, get another title shot. He really deserves it. I mean, that's kind of BS. I still can't stop thinking about that. You know, the guy got the title. Everybody, it was a gigantic pop when he came out. And he was a heel at the time, too. And even when, like, every time he came out, they still chanted for him and, you know, you know, cheered for him, even though he was a heel at the time. Over. Yeah. Um, and it was a perfect moment to kind of let him shine, but then they just kind of BS'd him. And he got a concussion, and Vince said that he wasn't making him enough money or something like that. And I'm like, the guy was out for a month with a fucking concussion. What do you want him to do? And then, uh, you know, a month and a half later, uh... He, he, yeah, no, I mean, he only had it for a month and a half, and then later, you know, he it dropped to, uh, I think ADR, Alberto Del Rio? Something like that. Yeah, it did. It, it get, uh, Del, Del Rio. Me. Del Rio got it, and then I think Cena got it after that. Yeah, that was, that was stupid on their part. I, I hope Ziggler wins another championship, though, and not one of the mid-card championships like the U.S. or the Intercontinental. I mean, like a WWE championship reign or a world heavyweight. At least a world heavyweight. Like, that was the one he was gunning for anyways. Um, but anyways, uh, the third thing we're going to talk about now, because we talked about the Ziggler thing, though we kind of went off topic and stuff, so. Uh, CM Punk, uh, leaving Fixes Mania, uh... What what I mean by this, and I, I read this article on uh, Bleacher Report, is that uh, if you think about it, CM Punk originally was scheduled to fight Triple H. And if you think about it again, Daniel Bryan probably most likely was not going to be included in the main event. It was probably just going to be Batista and Orton, and Daniel Bryan was going to fight maybe possibly Shawn Michaels maybe. You know, that was another rumored kind of thing going on. That Sheamus was another rumored one too? Sheamus and what? Daniel Bryan. Oh, Sheamus and Daniel Bryan was another one, yeah. Um, which that would be that would be Daniel Bryan's revenge from two years ago. But uh, I heard like Daniel Bryan was supposed to like start having his revenge. Like first he would fight Sheamus, and then he would fight you know Triple H or whatever, and Shawn, and and then he was gonna get the title and stuff. That would have been kind of cool. But uh, if you think about it, CM Punk leaving the WWE kind of fixes uh, unfortunately the card for him. Because he left, and it, you know, it's unfortunate that he left. Took his spot, you know. And, but Daniel Bryan kind of took his spot, and it's kind of a dick move by Triple H because CM Punk wanted to be in the main event of WrestleMania. That was the rumor of why he left. He wanted to be in the main event. Um, if you think about it, Daniel Bryan now has a chance to be in the main event by fighting Triple H. So if CM Punk would have stayed and fought Triple H, this might have happened to him. Possibly, yeah. Maybe it's like. Uh could be a punishment for CM Punk, like, that he left or something. Like, they're just saying, like, this is what you could have had if you stayed or yeah, something. Maybe it's a little jab. That's what I think that it might like, be. Like, Triple H did on Raw or something. He was talking about, like, CM Punk in, the, in that segment or something. He took a little jab. So maybe it's another little jab at CM Punk. But. Yeah. Um, it makes sense from a creative. Like, what they're doing with, like, the authority and stuff. Like, this whole thing, like, Triple H. Instead of, like, something not completely random, but, you know, like, the thing with Sheamus and Shawn Michaels. It sort of makes sense with all this, you know, the authority and stuff. Yeah. Like him, ideally, beating Triple H and then going on to win the title and, you know, have a big moment. Like, it all kind of makes sense. It all kind of fits into place really good. Yeah, um, the stipulation, if you don't know yet, uh, which pretty sure most of you should by now, uh, the stipulation for Daniel Bryan versus Triple H is that if Daniel Bryan, whoever, it was originally just going to be if Daniel Bryan wins, then he gets to go to the main event immediately to WrestleMania. But uh, now it's been changed to whoever wins gets to be in the main event. Um, to be completely honest with you, and I said this before to Zach, if Triple H wins this match, which he really shouldn't, but if he does, at least the main event will still be better. Like, because the main event, it's going to get booed the hell out of. No one's going to want to... Bryan doesn't win. Him having in their match, we know. Yeah. He, elevate it. You know, Triple H being in the match will still elevate it regardless. 
Um, because, you know, nobody wants to see Randy Orton and Batista, and Batista has no cardio and stamina, so he's, like, doing three moves a match. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that would definitely got booed out of the building. I'm glad they changed that. I'm sorry, but if you've watched any of Batista's matches full length recent, as of recent, uh, he's done five moves, maybe, ten, mo- ten moves at most, and just... That's it. And then he gets tired after that, and most of the show is him getting wailed on and him taking a breather. And You would think he would have four years to, you know. It's funny because I always think back. I'm like, didn't he do MMA for a bit? Why? He did MMA training. How are you tired? How do you have no cardio and stamina? <laughs> I don't know. Just think about that for a minute. You've only been gone for four years. How are you this tired already? Maybe he was kissing babies and hugging fat girls. Like, too busy with that. Yeah, like John Cena, apparently. You want some, some got some? I don't know. You said you want some, come gut some. You didn't even say the line, right? <laughs> Whatever. It's you want deal, some. You, deal with it. You, you want some, come, come get some. Be Batista, deal with it. No. Deal with it. He's using a meme, no. <laughs> sunglasses on, deal <laughs> with it. <laughs> Somebody, skinny, skinny jeans, deal with it. Somebody photoshopped Batista and put the sunglasses on him and said deal with it, and I started laughing. Probably you can buy skinny jeans on WVShop.com. Why does he wear skinny jeans? They're kind of cool. No. I think skinny jeans are retarded, but anyways, <laughs> off topic. Um, but yeah, if you think about Batista it... Batista says deal with it. So it doesn't matter what you say. Stop interrupting me! <laughs> anyways. You mother... Anyways. Um, <laughs> but what, if, what if I told you deal with it? <laughs> Shut up, Zach. <laughs> Alright, but anyways... Uh, CM Punk leaving, uh, you know, it kind of does fix WrestleMania, to be completely honest, though, um, if you think about it. I mean, it's kind of harsh on CM Punk, but it it's fortunate for Daniel Bryan that he left. You know, it, it fixes Daniel Bryan's... It's unfortunate for CM Punk, and it, it's fortunate, you know, for uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, because, you know, now he has a chance to be in the main event, which, if WWE was smart, uh, they would put Daniel Bryan, you know, have him beat Triple H, and then after that, win the main event. Um... If you haven't been noticing it, um, actually, uh, they've been kind of setting up Daniel Bryan to be kind of like um, Chris Benoit. Because if you think about it, Chris Benoit, I think it was him. It, for him, it took years, though, I think. Uh, for Chris Benoit, he, he was on the title hunt for a while. And then, you know, he finally won it at a triple in a triple threat match, you know, at Mania. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. You know, it was Coincidentally. At, coincidentally, yeah. Everything's setting up. Kind of strange, kind of spooky. I wish WrestleMania 30 was in 2015 for some strange reason. It's just awkward. 2014, 2004. Yeah. It should be in Madison Square Garden, like the other two were. The other three. That's a small arena, though. They can't. Keep it's special, doing... though. Yeah. I know. It has to be big. It's uh, uh, can't have some it in, people can't have it in the bingo yeah. hall. But anyways, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's about that. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm kind of glad CM Punk left in that way, so Daniel Bryan could come in. Yeah, in that way, but, you know, I but do... But any other way. Any other way, yeah. I, I still really miss the guy, to be honest. He's an awesome wrestler. Um, He'll come back. I, th- I, don't, I don't think it'll be anytime soon, though. Uh, yeah, not anytime soon. I'm sorry, we're, we're calling him CM Punk. Apparently Phil he, Brooks. Yeah, apparently he likes to be called by his actual name, by uh, which is Philip... Isn't it Philip James Jax Brooks or something like that? It's something like uh, that. Philip Brooks. Philip Brooks. Paul Levesque. Fucking, isn't that <laughs> Triple H? Yeah. yeah. Hunter. Doesn't, Hunter's doesn't he have, like, three names? Yeah. I don't know. Sean Michaels Hickenbottom or something. I don't know. Sean Hickenbottom Michaels? I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we were, we were talking about it a little bit before. We're going to talk about it a little bit now. Uh, the Andre the Giant match, uh, how do you feel about that? Match in general? Yeah, there's just a match in general. It's kind of a cool concept. Um, you know, like, it could um, it could really elevate a guy. Like, if they have, like, a young star win, you go, like, I don't know if, like, like the person could, like, I'm just go saying, around with the if, statue. I'm like, saying, saying I was the first one to win the yeah. Andre the Giant Battle Royale, and you weren't. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm just saying, like, way. I I think that if they're going to have Big Show win at some point, you might as well do it now and just get it out of the way. Big Show doesn't need it. I think you better give it to another guy. I'm just saying. What is Big if, Show gonna turn heel again? I'm just saying. And then turn back face, and then heel, and then face again. He turned so many times, but go on. Big Show isn't that bad. Stop making fun of him. He really is that bad. He's not that bad. 
But anyways, um... Leave a comment down below if you think Big Show's that bad. He's not a, that bad of a wrestler, Jesus. We'll, we'll let the people decide. <laughs> anyways, um... You know, but if they're gonna eventually plan on him winning it, you know, at some point, because he is the big guy, he is the replacement for Andre the Giant in terms of size, then you might as well have him win the first one, get it over with, and then whatever. Um, personally, uh, Dolph Ziggler has been getting pushed, like I said, so I hope he wins it, um, or just, you know, as Zach said, one of the other younger guys, then if Big Show is not gonna win it. But yeah, uh... I just, uh, I, on my personal opinion on it, I, I agree with some fans... Uh, I think that it should be the tro the Andre the Giant trophy, but I also think that it should be a, some sort of title, um, like, you know, uh, title match, title match too. Like the person gets to be able to like a money in the bank. Yeah. Kind of like a money in the bank kind of thing. Like the person gets, uh, you know, to be in a title match, but I think that I don't think it should be for the WWE or the world heavyweight as that is what the money in the bank is for. Mid card championship. I think it should be for the mid card championships, uh, which is the intercontinental or the, uh, U S which I mean, that's still, that would be fine to me. Uh, what's your take on that? Yeah. Um, maybe like, cause just winning a statue. I mean, yeah, it's Andre the giant and it's his trophy and all that. That's something nice. More. Just a little something more after their hard work of going through a 30 man match. Yeah. Maybe like, like the world rumble basically. Um, you can, like, have him win, and then maybe, like, you can get any... You get a shot at any title you want, you know, any time, whatever. Just not the world titles. Like, the U.S., whatever. Any other ones, but... Yeah. Maybe even, like, you can get the tag team, maybe, if you want to choose that. Yeah, um... Partner with somebody. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, even, the, maybe, even maybe the tag teams. Um, that'll be, that would be interesting. Just something, I guess, you know, would yeah, be nice. Yeah, just something extra. Uh, personally... Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about here, I don't know why I said personally, by the way. I thought I thought I was going to continue off that, but I said I wanted to keep it short. And then I looked at the time and saw that we're like 26 minutes in now, about to be 27. But, uh, yeah, I like looked at the time and I was like, oh, I probably should stop talking about this. But anyways, all right. So the next thing we're talking about, though, is uh, the Shield's possible... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, AJ possibly losing her title. My bad. Uh, now you know what the next thing is now, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways... Uh, Let's grab that. Scrub it, <laughs> cut it out, edit, <laughs> something. <laughs> but anyways, um, the next thing is uh, AJ uh, possibly losing her title. And uh, I actually want to go a little further into that. I, I saw an article on Bleacher Report, and it's like, uh, is CM Punk's departure the reason for AJ's recent losses and stuff? And, I mean, WWE is kind of a harsh environment. I actually think that's true. I think if CM Punk left, you know, that is his fiance. Um, so... Or his girlfriend, whichever one it is. Uh, you know, if CM Punk leaves and, you know, they don't want maybe AJ to be the Divas champion anymore because she's related to him in that manner. Yeah, I think I've read an article, too. Like, they're, they're doing her something. It's just unfair, I guess, you know. I personally... You can't help who you, like, I relationship personally, with and that person left. Yeah. I personally would, like, um... I would like AJ to at least have it for a year, you know, like CM Punk did, but... She went in, like... She's past the 200-day mark now. She's, like, been past it for a while now, actually. When is the year mark, though? I don't I don't know. When did she win it? I think it was, like, May or June. I, I'm going to check that, because uh, I, I do want to know when AJ won the title. Um, it was against Caitlyn, correct? Yeah, it was. Hmm. When did she win it? Um... It was at Payback, correct? It might have been. Yeah. Sorry about the delay. Yeah, sorry about the delay. I'm I'm curious to when she uh to when she won it though. Uh, let's check here. Wikipedia, this stuff. Gotta love Wikipedia. Gotta love Wikipedia. Yep. <laughs> Wait, was Extreme Rules before Payback? Yeah. Oh, then in that case, I think it might have been Extreme Rules. Oh yeah, maybe. I think it might have been Extreme Rules, yeah. Uh, results. Let's see here. Defeated Caitlyn. So the payback was on June 16th, 2013. Uh, Extreme Rules was May 19th, 20, uh, 2013. Uh, and the results were that... That was a long time from WrestleMania. Yeah. Hmm. 
<laughs> horse. All right. What? <laughs> no, it's just you can hear the horse in the other room that from the commercial that's playing or whatever on, on the TV. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, she wanted that payback. It was payback. So uh, June uh, 16th, 2013, uh, AJ Lee won it at that point. And so she's pretty close to a year. I'd just rather, I would love it if AJ just kept it for like, you know, a year and then dropped it maybe, but there, she's probably going to drop it sooner now, like at WrestleMania, um, which, I mean, she's had it for a long time. She's had a good run, but the issue here is that the problem is that it, she shouldn't just drop it because CM Punk left, yeah. you know? Um, now, Naomi is back, and uh, she's a great wrestler, don't get me wrong, but um, apparently, I think Naomi is going to probably beat AJ for the title um, at WrestleMania, but... uh. If that happens, I mean, that'll be fine and all, because I like Naomi. She's a good wrestler. She deserves uh, deserves a shot at the title. But, I mean, again, the stakes are that, you know, the choices being made is that pretty much she's been losing a lot of matches as of recent due to CM Punk's departure, most likely. And that's kind of effed up, in my opinion. And uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, it's kind of messed up if they truly are doing that, um... We don't we don't know personally, but we can only speculate and stuff. But um, yeah. On 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 one hand, I would like to see like you said, like Naomi win. No, I was about oh. to say like her to get to a year. Oh, get to a year. But on the other hand, um, I was gonna I was gonna say like uh, they're thinking maybe Brie Bella because Daniel Bryan's like no the when no. soon will be after I that. I don't want to see the Bellas in a title picture, please. I'd rather see Brie than Nikki, but um. I think that could be a, somewhat of a nice what, moment, but... What, wait, why? What? Why? I don't know, just because, I don't know. Nikki's the powerhouse, and Brie is the the whatever. I don't even know what Brie is. Brie's amazing. No, but, um... <laughs> I, I'm tired of seeing the Bellas up there, though. They're annoying. because they're, they're, they're on Total Divas. And that they're both related to John Cena and, um, Daniel Bryan. <laughs> no, I don't know, I just... Be, no, it's... be a it's, nice moment, but I'd rather have AJ just keep it. I, I would not want to see any of the Bellas have a title anytime soon, but anyways. I think Naomi would win in WrestleMania. They would wait. I don't know if they would do it that soon. What do you mean? They have two They have two weeks until Mania. Still, it just seems... It was supposed it seems, to happen... It's kind of weird. It, it was supposed to happen before anyways, but she got injured. I know, but I think they would just do it a little bit after WrestleMania if they were to do that. I don't know if they would do it at WrestleMania. I think WrestleMania would be the best time to do it, if they're going to do it. Um, but anyways, yeah, so it's, it's kind of depressing that she been, she's been losing a lot. And if it's for that reason of CM Punk leaving, then I think that's a little ridiculous. But anyways, um, next up, though, is the, uh, the Shields match at WrestleMania, uh, because we have no clue. We have no clue now what it is, technically speaking. We kind of do. It's a rumor. Um... Like, originally we thought the rumor and the best idea was to have a triple threat match between The Shield because they were having cracks in them, and uh, that, you know, I thought that a triple threat match was going to happen in which it would be for Dean Ambrose's uh, U.S. title, uh, which it seemed like that. It was really getting into that now, mm. and because, like, at one point, Roman Reigns, like, said something about, well, you haven't defended that title in, you know, forever or whatever, um, and, you know, why don't you, you know, put it up uh, for a fight or whatever. And I was like, all right, that's going to be awesome. You know, they're going to have a triple threat at WrestleMania, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Some people might not want to see the Shield break up. And personally, I love the Shield. So, I mean, I don't want to. I don't really want to see them break up. But still, the idea of a triple threat match between the three would be awesome. Yeah. For the U.S. Yeah. Um, and have Roman Reigns most likely win, even though Seth Rollins is also awesome now. Uh, he wasn't really... He really shining lately. Yeah, um... Apparently he was this great in in NXT, but they just haven't been doing anything with him until re as of recent. They're all great, to be honest. Yeah, they're it's all. It's not like the Wyatts were like the guy, the guy in the green. I forget his name, but you know the Wyatts. Bray Wyatt is a decent one. Luke Harper really shines a lot. Um, and then the one in the green is uh, Owen. He's he's okay. It's sort of like ups and downs with he, the yeah he is. The, the Wyatt family, but like the Shield, they're all yeah. The Shield are all great wrestlers. Singly, they're great. And together even, you know, greater, so. Yeah, but now, as of recent, um, they've had the Shield come back together and stuff. And generally, they've been a heel for the most part. But they actually are pretty much faces now, to be completely honest. Uh, they've 
They've been fighting with the authority. They're getting on Kane's bad side. You know, the New Age outlaws are supposed to be heels, and they did a thing with Triple H on Raw or something. Yeah, they did the thing with Triple H on Raw or whatever. Turned on him. Oh, yeah, they turned on him. Uh, so I mean, essentially, the Shield is pretty much a face right now. And what I've heard for the rumor is that the New Age outlaws and Kane are gonna fight the Shield. That just feels it's kind of weird. It's really weird and random, to be completely honest. It really is. Like, I would rather see the Shield versus, you know, the Wyatt family again. That's a selling point right there. Or the breakup thing, like the triple thing, like they originally thinking about doing. Yeah, or the, like, you know, the original breakup idea, but. I mean, the Kane's trying to make, someone makes sense because they have, they have, like, some interaction, but the New Age Outlaws is just. Well, no, as of the the New Age Outlaws beat them up on SmackDown. Well, yeah. Yeah. But uh, before that, you know. It just. Like, no interaction at all. It doesn't really make that much sense. I. I mean, Kane, I know, will do good, but the New Age Outlaws haven't been as good as they used to be. They're kind of, you know, they can tell, you can tell that they've been, they've gotten older. Oh, um, you didn't know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, uh, I don't really think that's going to be, because the New Age Outlaws, when they fight and put on matches, they get you kind of hyped up and stuff because they yell things, but <laughs> uh, it's just, it, the, their actual wrestling performance and the shield, and the shields are, like, way off compared to each other. Billy Gunn's in, I think he's in better shape than, like, Road Dog though, like, yeah, I he think, can actually sort of go. Yeah, Billy Gunn can go for a bit, Road Dog is kind he actually, of... He actually does look good, though. Yeah, he's still, he's still kind of muscular It's and not stuff. like he, like, pulled a, whoever's not that athletic kid they used to be, I don't know. Yeah, like, you know, Billy example. Gunn can still go gun, uh, can, uh, I was about to say, can still gun, go gun ho or whatever, but he can, uh... Guns and Roses? Shut up. <laughs> he can still go. <laughs> um, Mr. So, yeah. Mr., uh, what is it? The badass Billy Gunn. <laughs> oh, you didn't know. Oh, you didn't know. No, you better, you ass better call to me because it's not PG. Because it's PG now. You, you, just, you just messed it up so badly, but anyways. You uh, better call Shut up. Then. Uh, so we got, uh, <laughs> we got Taker and Lesnar at WrestleMania. This has been getting hyped up a lot as of recent. Um,. What's what's your take on uh, Taker versus Lesnar again? We've, I know we've talked about it a bit already, and uh, but I just you know what's what's your you know your thoughts on it and everything. Well, I don't have too many thoughts. It it should be good, and they are building it up, and you know making it. Important. They're building they're building it up. Like good. They should. They're building it up good. Like I think uh, on Raw tomorrow, and technically now tomorrow because today is Sunday, on Raw tomorrow. Um, I think Undertaker actually is, yeah, he's going to be on Raw tomorrow again, so this is a lot of, you know. And he was on main event. Yeah, and he was on main event. Yeah, um, you know, he's he's been making a lot of appearances, you know, uh, even though he's just talking, it's a lot for Undertaker. Um, like, he's going to be on Raw tomorrow, and he said on main event, you know, if he has an issue with me or something like that, um, uh, come see me or whatever, if he doesn't understand the message that I just gave you to Paul Heyman. And uh, so, assuming uh, Brock Lesnar and Undertaker are going to have, like, maybe a mini brawl or something, uh, that'd be awesome for a promo, um, you know. Could, on, could be, yeah. Yeah, I think that would be awesome if Brock Lesnar shows up and uh, Undertaker and him kind of go at it a little bit on Raw. Yeah. To kind of get... It. I think, to be honest, though, if they're going to do that, I think that that should be saved for the week, the Raw before WrestleMania. The show? Yeah, the go... The, yeah, the Raw before WrestleMania. But uh, even if it happens the second week before, it's still a great idea to do that. Yeah, I'd probably save it to the... If I, I would Spe- do it, save it to the last. Yeah. And speaking of promos, by the way, NXT Arrival has had promos before the matches on superstars by themselves and on the superstars that are about to have a match. WWE doesn't do promos at all in between segments that much. We used to back in the day. Yeah, it, it was awesome when they did that. No. Have you guys noticed that there's no more promos really before matches on the pay per views these days? It's kind it's of usually after, huh? Usually after a match it's or never usually before, mostly after. Well, if it's the first match, you know, and there's a big time, you know, prom- uh, if it's a big time match for the first match, then they might. But uh, you know, like the, you know, after a match, they would show a promo for the next one, and they uh, they kind of haven't been doing that as of lately, and that's kind of sad. But when I saw NXT arrival, I was like, wow. I can't believe NXT is doing this and not WWE. What the hell, WWE? And it's sad because the pay-per-views always end, like, 15 minutes early. You know, that could be time used for some of the promos. Good point. But anyways, uh, I think WrestleMania, you know, though, is already pretty long, though. So, I mean, if they don't put promos in that, it's kind of okay. But it's WrestleMania, so there still should be promos in it. So. Should be entertaining, too. Not yeah. just matches. 
yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't be just matches. I think the promos really really got you, it got you hyped up for the match. You know, the promos got you like, all right, yeah, this match is about to happen. You yeah. know, yeah, like you know, a guy comes in, I'm gonna beat this guy. You know, I'm gonna show him a thing or two or something. You know, like you get yeah. you excited. I don't know. Just not you know. I don't mean promos exactly like that. I mean the Titantron promos too. Oh yeah, the promos before. Yeah, the, the like ti- the Rock and Stone Cold ones were amazing. Yeah, that's those, that's what I'm mainly talking about. The Titan Tron promos, like yeah. that. You know, NXT had those, and then you know Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. Yeah. You know things like that. It was great. But anyways, Mine, uh, not in WWE these days though. Yeah, it's just, Tough. it's just um. Unfortunate. You're gonna have if you're gonna build up a match like Taker and Lesnar this much, then at WrestleMania before their match, there should be a Titan Tron promo or something. Yeah. Did they ever see him punk last year in Undertaker before the match? I'm not sure if they did, actually. No, I think they did, actually. Mm-hmm. I think they might have. It was a big match, though. Yeah, it was a big match. Um, but, yeah, I I just I think that uh, for a match like this, there should be some sort of promo before it, though. But um, I think uh, Taker versus uh, Brock is going to be excellent now. At first, I was kind of like, I'd rather have this, I'd rather have that. I still kind of would rather have Sting versus Undertaker or, you know, John Cena uh, versus Undertaker. But, you know, now that I think about it, it's like they're building this up so well and they're doing a really great job with it. You know, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with Lesnar and Taker now at WrestleMania. Yeah, I guess I kind of feel that way, too. Like, I mean, they put on a great show before, you know, it's whatever. They are kind of in the feud. Yeah. Know? Like, you know, it's like uh, bad blood, like history, you know, like. You know, I wish I wish they kind of would do that a little bit though, but they're not going to because they what? like to they like to forget about. We'll show some stuff from the past. Oh, like they like, Triple H. They they like to forget that Undertaker went American Badass at some point, which they don't really talk about it at all anymore. Undertaker makes references sometimes. Undertaker went American Badass. Undertaker's always been Undertaker. What are you talking about? Shut up. But yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> John Cena, Fruity Pebbles. Amazing. It's kind of funny that. Um, Undertaker brings it up every now and then, though. He goes, my yard, or he'll do, like, the last ride or whatever every now and then, you know. Yes, that's the last ride. Zach's Old doing, school. Yeah, Zach was doing the... He's Well, he's always done that. He did that before the American Badass. No, I, I meant the actual move old school. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Snake eyes. And, uh, so, yeah, I think Taker and Lesnar is going to be great. They just, they've been doing a great job with it. I mean, they've been doing so many promos with it, and, uh, like I said, they're supposed to meet up on, uh, this Raw tomorrow. So, uh, I think that's going to be awesome. It should be good. Yeah. Definitely, uh, you know, the highlight of that WrestleMania probably... It's probably going to be one of the best matches of Like it's of been Wrestle- the past few years of Undertaker. Yeah, it's probably going to be one of the best matches of Mania. If not, um... I actually don't think it'll get match of the year, though, for the Slammies. I don't think it will. I think Daniel Bryan and, you know, will get that, actually, for one of his matches. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It depends if Brock and Undertaker really put on a good show. It's going to be, it's going to be, like, 30 minutes long, at least, so. Yeah. It's yeah, going to be, it's going to be an aggressive match. Like, Taker, t- t- Taker versus CM Punk was, like, it's 20, 22. It's, like, 22 minutes, something like that. That was a great match, though. Um, but that was because both Taker and Punk could have some sort of maniacal maniacal pace. The, can, the phone can pick that up, I'm pretty sure, but oh. anyways. Um, Sorry. Yeah, uh, Zach was waving his leg around if you are wondering what I'm talking about. But anyways, uh, it was... Calm your leg. No. Yeah, calm your leg. But anyways, um... I already... I forgot what I was <laughs> talking about now, you jerk. Well, uh, <laughs> you didn't say anything. Oh, um, yeah, I, you know, Taker versus Punk, they, they can kind of have slowdown moments, and that's cool for the match and all, but Brock Lesnar, you know, as WWE keeps bringing up, is a very aggressive guy, so, you know, the match can go on for 30 minutes or maybe even more, I feel like it's gonna be, it's not gonna have weapons in it, obvious, obviously, unless they change the stipulation uh, at the last minute or something, but, like, I feel like it's gonna be, like, Triple H versus Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell, where they take breaks every now and then. 40 minutes? Not, not that. No, I don't mean in length. No. I, I just mean, like, well, kind of in length, but, no, that match was, like, 50 minutes. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was, like, 50 was minutes. It that long? Yeah. It took up most of the show. It was pretty awesome, though. Yeah, but I, I feel like, in terms of the actual match itself, I feel like it's gonna kind of be, like, Undertaker and Triple H in the sense that, you know, it kind of dragged on from time to time. Because, you know, uh, Triple H was trying to tell Undertaker to give up and he hit him with a weapon every now and then. Like, I feel like Brock 
is going to like keep hurting Undertaker, and he's going to keep taking breaks, and it's going to get dragged on a little bit. Uh, but I'm perfectly fine with that. The match is probably going to be great, so yeah. It'll, just like the past years, it'll be highway come out of WrestleMania, probably. Yeah. If It'll be match of the year, though, if it... It if, definitely won't be Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez kind of match. Can we not talk about that? <laughs> you <laughs> don't it, remember that? Shut up. <laughs> Let's not talk about WrestleMania 9 at all, period. But anyways... Not WrestleMania ever. Shut up. <laughs> it's, don't even don't even be sarcastic he's, about that. He's, he's got the chlorophyll. That was the worst Undertaker match in history, but anyway... It was anyways, like a DQ, too. It was a DQ. Jesus Christ. It's like a blemish on his streak, but... Yeah, anyways... Let's, let's forget about that. Let's forget about that. Yeah, I, I think it'll be... If it's gonna be like the Triple like H... The thing, like I said, with Triple H and how the match is gonna get dragged out and they're gonna add a lot of drama to it, um, you know, Paul Heyman's gonna be, you know, special guest of the... Uh, not special guest referee, but uh, he's gonna be, you know, manager on the side, you know? He's gonna be, you know, sitting there pumping Brock up and, you know, talking stuff to the crowd and junk, so... Uh, there's gonna be, hopefully, a lot of drama in that match, and if there is, then that's definitely gonna be possibly match of the year. Brock was. I hate the way Paul Heyman says Brock's name. Paul Heyman's amazing. Anyways, uh... I'm a Paul Heyman guy. Yeah, you have the shirt. I'm not wearing it right now. Yeah, I know. The voice of the voice of the voiceless. Of the voiceless of the voiceless? Touche. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, last thing we gotta talk about here is uh, Daniel Bryan's matches in general uh, at WrestleMania, possibly. Uh, Zach's doing the yes, yes, yes thing I right now. I said yes. That's one of the shirts. WShop. Dot com. Shop at www.shop.com, kid. Anyway, it's not. www.wweshop.com. You have a point there. This is what I just did. www.wweshop.com. Did you try switching it to Wumbo? Wow, why did you Yeah, but Dan O'Brien at WrestleMania, I think... Again, the best way to do this is to have Daniel Bryan uh, win against Triple H and then have, you know, they're building him up kind of like Chris Benoit, have like the Chris Benoit moment, you know, where he's been chasing after the title and, uh, you know, wins the triple threat match against two top star guys, even though nobody really treats Batista like a top star guy right now. But, um, you know, besides Triple H and I guess the people that want him to be. But anyways, you know, have him, you know, go against the other you know, have Brian go against the other two top star guys and then, you know, win the match. And it'd be awesome if they had confetti and everything. Like, you That's know. That's what I was thinking. You know what I was thinking, too? Is if CM Punk was still around and if, you know, like, they change it around, like, um, CM Punk was doing something else and Daniel Bryan was doing this, they could have hugged, like Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero did. Oh, yeah, like, you know, if CM best Punk. Best friends. Yeah, CM Punk was. I don't know if they're best, but they're really good friends. They're really good friends, yeah. It'd be actually, that'd be all, well, or John Cena, because, you know, even though. Daniel Bryan and John Cena? Yeah. I, mean, I think CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. I think would mean CM, more. I think CM, Bryan, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan would mean more, but you know John Cena has been helping Bryan throughout the whole entire him title run thing. You know, if you notice, John Cena will back up Daniel Bryan every now and then when he's talking, you know, constantly and uh, and giving promos. And plus, you know, they're you know one is is dating Brie Bella and the other one is dating Nikki Bella and what stuff. What coincidence? Uh, I, if, if it was either John Cena or Punk Hug and Brian, you know, and the confetti fell and everything, I'd be happy with that, though, still. Or just 80,000 people saying yes. Yes, 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 yes while the confetti... I still... Just I want, go off. That's there needs the to be confetti. I'm just saying. There needs to be. But they don't want to clean that up. That would be... That would cement the moment... Cement the moment of, uh, Brian winning. Just like at SummerSlam. Huh? Just like at SummerSlam, the confetti. Yeah. But just when anyone wouldn't come out in cash. Yeah. He doesn't have it anymore. Yeah. He's the champion. Yeah. Hopefully Batista doesn't win. Yeah. <laughs> there was this idea tossing around, I forgot how to get to it, uh, but of making it a fatal four-way with like Triple H in there. I forgot how some people were saying how you would get to it, but uh, like Triple well, H Triple like, H owns the company, so like I could, could see... He could like interject himself into the match. Yeah, I could see even like... Even if he lost. I could see Brian winning... And what happens is Triple H can't believe that he lost, you know, to the B-plus player or whatever. Or, uh, you know, I, I can imagine Triple H getting, like, really infuriated by it. And then, like, you know, putting himself in the match to make sure, try and make sure that Brian, you know, uh, doesn't, you know, win. Would you rather see the triple threat or the fatal four-way? Kind of the fatal four-way, actually. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It'd be a lot of beatdown with Daniel Bryan, I think. Like, 
Triple H. Is I think well, they would beat up they would beat up Brian, and then he would get back in the match, and then they they could At do first, yeah, they yeah, would like beat him up and like they would come like back. R, like RVD when he came back from Money in the Bank, he like he did the Rob Van Dam thing, and then everybody wailed on him. <laughs> wailed on him. Wailed on him. But uh, I think that if if they're gonna wail on Daniel Bryan, <laughs> why do you put that? <laughs> If they're going to beat on Daniel Bryan, though, in the first of the match, what I think is going to happen is because Randy Orton and Batista kind of aren't getting along as well, though. I think Batista and Randy Orton are just going to keep fighting it out and stuff, you know, while, you know, that kind of like, uh, you know, how Cody Rhodes and Ted uh, DiBiase. Diabetes. You had to bring that up, didn't you? Never anyway, forget. Shut up. Anyways, uh, but anyways, um... You know, like how they had legacy and stuff. Uh, it's a new day. It's a new channel. You sound like a very overweight person trying to sing this song. <laughs> it's a new day. Some people like to sing. Can I continue? Yes. Okay. Anyway, so it's like legacy um, in terms of, uh, like, you know... Uh, they focused on Randy Orton throughout pretty much the entire match, but then in the middle of the match, Cody Rhodes and... We're talking about the triple threat. Yeah, at Mania. Um, they, you know, in the middle of the match, Cody Rhodes and Ted, you know, both didn't see eye to eye at one point because they were trying... One was trying to pin him, and the other one wanted the victory instead, and then they started fighting, you know? Like, even even if they, if they beat on... I was about to say whale, and then Zach was going to smile and laugh. But uh, anyways... Even if still they, he still he still is, uh, but uh, you know even if they beat on Daniel Bryan, um, it would still you know the Batista and Randy Orton fighting thing would happen, and then Triple H would want to win it at the end, so he would break it up instead of you know. That's usually what happens with Triple Threats or something. I think like they like wail on a person at first, and then sort of get now them you're out. Say, now you're saying wail on. It's catching on. <laughs> it's catching on. It's a virus. Pretty much. It's a disease. It's an infection. Pretty much, yeah, and they'll, like, wail on the guy at first, and then he'll come back, you know, and then... Yeah. There's also the idea that Triple H might win the championship, which is... I don't know if that will exactly happen. I think that if that happened, it would be better than Orton keeping it and Batista getting it. Really? Yes. You think so? If Triple H got it, I would be much happier with Orton not having it and Batista not getting it at all. I don't want to see Batista have it at all, and I'm tired of Randy... He's not even... The type of heel he is right now, I don't like how he is, how he's constantly running at the authority and be like, you guys need to protect me. I like I like legend killer Randy Orton. The chicken know? shit heel he is right now. <laughs> the chicken shit heel. There's someone called me that. He's in the Breakfast Club. No, but uh, I heard they might turn face Who? to WrestleMania. Orton? Yeah, unfortunately. He's not... No, it's not that he's bad as a face. It's when he goes stale as a face is when it's a bad thing. Like when the they don't, years, when they when don't, he was a face, he was stale. Huh? He was stale. The past few years when he was a face. No, but like when he, when he, after, I think it was 09, when, you know, after, after he stopped being a heel for so long, like when he first became a face after that, he was oh, When he broke up evolution, with evolution? No. When he, well, okay, when he first came in, when he was like the job or face or whatever, but then when he allowed to fight Triple H and Batista and stuff. An evolution, no, uh, but then when he broke away, he then turned face, which that was a really good face. And then he turned heel. No, I'm referring. The killer thing. I'm, no, I'm referring to to re, as of recent in '09 or '010 or whenever he turned. Wait, do you say when he turned face or when he turned heel? When he turned heel. Or no, I'm sorry. When he turned face, yeah. He turned face when he won that match. I think the triple threat. I would have to say. Well, anyways. Um, at some point, Randy Orton, uh, I think it, I think it was 2010 to be honest, uh, Randy Orton was heel and then he turned face and then he was stale for about a good two years cause they weren't doing anything with him. The first half of him being a face though, after he, you know, after he was a face for so long, like that was fine. He wasn't stale cause he had a couple rivalries, but then like he just, they didn't really, he had a couple matches after that and just random rivalries as a face. It was bleh. He wants to be healed so badly. He's he just has this attitude, you know, like doing the things with the fans and stuff. Like, I just don't like him as a heel right now because he's not doing any of the Randy Orton traits that he used to, like be violent or you know anything like, like whining that. Whining to the authority. Yeah, he's whining to the. He's like the, not being the legend killer. He, yeah, he's the heel that he's the type of heel that's like I need everything to protect me, and then you know I don't know how I feel about that. Chicken shit heel. <laughs> Where did you get that from? <laughs> from somebody. 
don't know. Yeah, but it's anyways. Um, I think that, regardless, though, Daniel Bryan, in my opinion, should win the Triple, th- uh, triple H match and then win the Triple Threat. If it's a Fatal 4-Way, then he should win the Fatal 4-Way. I think it's kind of... I think it's kind of guaranteed that he may probably win the Triple H thing. Because they wouldn't have him lose... And then Wait, actually, the event. triple threats and fatal four ways are uh, no disqualification, correct? I think triple. I think triple threats are no disqualification. I don't know. I about think a fatal. fatal I think fatal four ways are the same. Well, I don't know. Uh, what if like CM Punk showed up and you know made and you know say for example Dan Bryan was about to lose, then CM Punk showed up and got him to win. What are you, Russo? What? No, only some people get that, but uh, you just some Booker guy. I don't think I don't think CM Punk would do that. You don't think he would do that? I don't think he would come back. Well, I don't think he would come back to wrestle. I think he would just come back and. No, I, I don't think he would do that anyway. Even for that segment, I don't think he'll come back for a while. Yeah, I don't think he will either. I'm just saying, like that would be a that's a possibility though that he might. I don't know if that's a possibility even. Well, that's you. If he were to come back, I think he would have showed up on that Chicago Raw. I I don't know. I don't think that at all. I think that was just a, a tease for WWE to make poke fun of him. Yeah, but anyways, that's that's all the topics. Um and yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. WrestleMania is 2 weeks away. 2 weeks away. So uh we hope you enjoy your 2 weeks until then. Uh I don't know if we're going to do another one before this, uh another talk show thing before this, but we are going to do the predictions video. Um in which we will decide, you know, our opinion. Yeah, in the review. Uh, but yeah, um, so look forward to our prediction video and the review of WrestleMania 30 when that time comes. Uh, if we do another talk show thing, it might not be, uh, before WrestleMania, but it'll, obviously there will be another one after WrestleMania. But anyways, yeah, so, uh, I hope you enjoy the video, guys. Uh, Zach, you gonna say your goodbyes? See you. Yeah. That's all you got? Go to my channel. Huh? Go to my channel. You don't have a channel. What does he do? No, you don't. Yes, I do. Yeah, you, you, no one cares about it, though. <laughs> Obama does. Obama right. subscribed to me. See, and Phil Brooks is. He said he's in. The only playing. video that's on your channel is the th- school project. You no, did. I have another one, too. Really? I do, actually. All right, now we're rambling. Anyways. Don't leave my video. Shut up. Now we're rambling. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Zag, are you going to give a proper goodbye, or are you just going to say, you're just going to say, see you? That's a proper goodbye. See you, people of YouTube land. Okay, that works. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and uh, remember, stay sexy. Peace.